Uh, my name is Rob Daly. I'm a director in CPL. Uh, we're a recruitment company. Um, we're the only Irish PLC recruitment agency. Really what we're going to kind of talk to is really about your CV, where are all the jobs and how, how to go about getting uh, interviews, getting jobs and where to find everything. Okay, so really the main thing is uh, your CV. The CV today uh, really has an impact of anywhere from five to ten seconds when an employer sees it. So if you're not making an impact with that CV and if you're not getting call back in terms of interviews or feedback on it, it is down to that document that you have sent out. So some of the key things that you need to work on are the whole preparation of CVs, which most people don't do. So what I wanted to kind of show you is this is your average hiring manager or HR person's desk and your CV is buried in somewhere along there, okay? So I know that's a bit of a joke scenario, but the reality of it is, is that with everything online, you are probably one of thousands of applications coming in. And really what you've got to do is figure out what is different about uh, your CV, your experience, and how you engage. The previous speaker that I was listening to, had all about describing the projects and the passion of what you do. You've got to translate that onto the CV and make it valid, valid and relevant for an employer. So most times, I think what our parents would say is, send out as many CVs as you can. Get and blast 400 companies and you'll hear something back. Reality is, if that's what you do, you'll never hear anything back. You've got to be targeted with your CV, know the job that you're applying for, and know the company. What you need to do is target your CV into an employer. Most uh, people will kind of have a very different view on how they write CVs. So earlier on uh, at our uh, desk downstairs, we got a CV that had six pages long, okay? That's probably not going to be read by most people. So you've got to think about being succinct. That's not, now we're not in the US, most US companies will have a one page resume. So typically here the average length is two to three. If you're a graduate, keep it to two. If you've more experience you want to talk through, then you can make it to three or you can have an addendum with any projects or specific work. But you need to keep it to the two to three pages. So really what we tend to get uh, in CPL and in most companies are a first draft. So people have sent in the CV and you know that they haven't spent time working on it. If, if you don't get a call back from HR, recruitment, or a different company, it's really down to yourself. You haven't made the CV come across uh, in terms of understanding why they should call you back. You've got to convince somebody to spend all their time to call you back rather than dealing with that desk full of CVs. And I tell you, we get about 35,000 CVs a month. 89% of them have spelling errors or mistakes or are badly written. So a lot of our time is spent re-engineering CVs. This is a simple format to have on it, okay? Have the contact details, your profile, career and achievements, so, and break that down. One of the things you don't want to put on is a career objective because most likely your career objective will have shifted within three months. References, ideally take them off uh, and just have them available on request. Um, it, you'd be amazed how many people put on references who actually give bad references about you. That's not where you want to be. So you want to control that. So we just recommend keeping the career objective and the reference off the CV. Do you put a photo on? What way do you look at these things? What way do you describe the font? These are some simple things. So there was a study, I think it was on last year, uh, by LinkedIn, which did a heat map on CVs with pictures on it. And what they discovered were that any attractive women that put pictures on their CV were rejected by most HR organizations. That's not me saying it, but what was happening was that women were rejecting women based on the photo on the CV. That's not me, that was the study revealed in terms of the heat map where the eyes went on that picture. So unless the company or looks for it, don't put it on. If you're gonna have a six page CV and it's all in tiny font, that will have an impact. So you need to think and look at previous CVs or look at CVs online, or if you're working with recruiters like ourselves, ask for sample CVs that you can actually work with on it. Key words, this is a critical importance in this digital age. Whether you are working in HR or software engineering, you've got to have key words in your CV. It's how people search for uh, staff. So for example, if you're in HR, you don't just put HR in your CV. You need to put human resources because people will not search for just HR in a search function. 
okay? So it's also, if you're working in organizations, you need to not just put the company name, for example, like a CRH or a Vodafone, you need to put the industry, because people will be searching for people coming from industry backgrounds. They might necessarily be searching for company names. So keywords are critical, but you do not want to overload it with acronyms, because that's always a challenge to read, and you've got to have a CV that translates not just to a technical person, but to a non-technical person. When you're describing uh, work that you've done on the CV, these are just sentences that we would typically see, and you just think, OK, I'll write these down, OK? But they don't give you anything. It never describes what the person does. It just gives me buzzwords. Project manage this, you know, led five people. Doesn't give you detailed information. So for example, if you look at the key points here, you know, waiter at a busy restaurant, actually I hated customers, right? You know, so organized budgets, never got anything right. So you need to give the points you're making a context. If you manage budgets, you need to explain the size and scale of those budgets, not just say, I manage budgets. I had to have an outcome out of that, OK? So these are all just key things to be aware of. One of the things that you've also got to be aware of is loads of mistakes in spelling. I know it seems uh, juvenile, and I'm talking to all adults. However, most CVs will have some form of spelling mistake on it that we receive in. If you've worked in a job or you've worked on a project, so what? So when you're writing your CV, ask yourself that question. Why am I putting down project manage this? What, what does that mean? Okay? Or led five people, sold this, worked on this project. Whatever description you're putting down, you've got to ask yourself, so what? What impact is this? You've also got to kind of see about, well, what company are you applying for? What job are you applying for? Why is this relevant? Why is this point, you know, if the company is looking for a graduate that can multitask, why am I not talking about that? Right? Why are my points just the general CV that I created five months ago and now I'm churning the same thing out? You've got to tailor the CV and ask yourself, so what, on each question. Also, if you can match it to the job spec that you've seen online and ask yourself, so what, after you've answered all your CV pieces. This stands out for graduates and people with that apply to jobs. There's probably four ways to find jobs. Direct applications, advertisements, whether that be online or offline, recruitment companies, headhunters, and using your own network. These are companies that have been hiring, I suppose, in the last six, 12 months, OK? Now, loads of people will have applied for them, OK? What we would say here is that if you are writing in a dear sir, dear madam, you're dead. You're just not going to hear back, OK? Because you haven't made any effort to find out who to send it into. Now, most likely what you'll get is companies will have an info at this address. So you're kind of going, well, how do I get beyond that? Well, you can call reception. Most people don't call, right? And don't ask the question, I'm trying to send my CV in for a particular job. Who do I address that to? OK? If you're clever enough, you can almost find it. So the other point to look to is, do you want to apply for these companies? Yes, they're all great, big, sexy, attractive names. But do you want to work for them? You really need to ask that question of yourself before you start sending out your CV. Everybody wants to work in Facebook and Google. That's just not going to happen. When I was in school, all the parents wanted us to be doctors and solicitors. That's just not going to happen. Somebody has to plumb. Somebody has to be a carpenter. So we all need to realize that it isn't just about these companies and the attractive US multinationals. There are other organizations out there. The other way to look and find jobs, I suppose, it's mainly online. It won't be just in the career section. It will be on LinkedIn. It could be on, for example, there's games companies that are advertising their jobs in the middle of games. The ugly question, how do you get the most out of us uh, reprobates in recruitment agencies? OK, this is a tough challenge because what I suppose what it's trying to do is educate you guys in terms of how to engage with us. The National Recruitment Federation is the body that governs agencies, so that will provide a full list of specific uh, companies in that space. Here's just some of the points. So this is really what our raison d'etre is. What we are not is careers counselors. So if you come in and expect us to tell you the job that you're going to get, it just isn't going to happen. You need to be more articulate about what it is you would like to do. Where are the skills that you have? At least that gives somebody a direction, right? You need to identify recruiters that will help you. A relationship with a recruiter is a two-way street. You need to ask them what can they do for you. Same as what are you going to do for them. So it's really about picking the one that you want. Provide a professional perception of yourself. So if you're going in to meet a recruiter, be on time. Don't treat it like, oh, it's a chore, because otherwise they just won't be bothered with you. So listen to their advice. 
Okay, so if they tell you your CV is no good, you need to then ask, well, how would you suggest improving it? Ask for feedback. Ask for feedback about how they've presented, how you've presented yourself. Do you come across well in the interview? Do you need to practice interviewing? How does your CV look? They will give you all of that advice and direction. We only make money in terms of if we put the right candidate forward. So if that's not you, why not? So you need to be open to hearing why you weren't the right person. Think of your email and cover letter. This has got to be targeted, okay? This has got to be interesting. It's got to explain why you're relevant for a position. This I just thought was an interesting one in terms of how companies themselves go about looking for candidates, okay? So they will typically promote, if they can, from internal, right? They'll also want to have proof so that's why an internal applicant has a better chance of getting the job because they're a proven entity. Um, they'll also then ask colleagues close to them, do you know anybody who could be good for this job? Right? They'll then go to people like ourselves. Right? So you can see the track that they're following. Networking. So everyone kind of has a different perception about what networking is. So again, this is about using the current people in your sphere. So that could be people in your college class. Right? When, when I went for my job here in CPL, uh, I realized that 10 other people from my class had interviewed in the same month in the organization and not one of us talked to each other. What you can do in that scenario is you can go to the other person who's interviewing them and ask for how they prepared for that interview, what sort of questions they were asked, how did it go, what was the demeanor, what are they looking for. All I'm just saying to you is you've got to use that network internally. You've also got to think about family and friends and I think the other aspect a previous colleague was on uh, talking about LinkedIn. So again you've got to use LinkedIn carefully. So it isn't necessarily just about being talkative and going over to people. It's also about choosing who you want to network with, who you think can help you and how you can help them. So thinking creatively around how you can approach uh, and how you can apply to organizations is key. Somebody sent in a shoe with their CV and said, now that I've one foot in the door, maybe you'll give me a job, right? So it was interesting. The uh, person who received the CV, one company went, not a chance, I'm not into that uh, sort of stuff, but another company did like it. The other one was Facebook. And again, I thought this was one of the uh, clever aspects, which was it was somebody, a graduate, looking for a job in uh, recruitment. And she'd applied and hadn't heard back. So what she decided to do was she decided to look at what she was trying to do. She looked at all the jobs on Facebook's uh, website, picked a job that was over three months old, and then she sent them in a strategic overview about how she would approach uh, and source and fill that job. She got a call for interview, she got the position. I think too many times when you're applying for jobs, it's all about me. You've got to think about the employer in terms of what are they getting out of it. It can cost an employer almost two years before a graduate becomes a, uh, uh, covers their cost. So it's an expensive hire for companies to make. So you've got to think, why should they put their hat or hire you to be that investment? It's two years of their time, energy, commitment that it'll take. So the other actions that I wanted to kind of talk through quickly again are, prepare a world-class CV. So that does not mean, um, you know, again, 15 pages. It means a targeted CV. What I think you need to be prepared for with this, guys, is you're not going to have one CV fit all, okay? You're going to have targeted CVs that are organized for each company that you want to apply for. You need to tailor it for that particular role. If you give them a reason to call you back, they will call you back. If you send in a generic CV that you've sent out everywhere, it shows you don't care. And if you don't care, they won't care. Understand how to interview. What I think you should be able to do is get somebody with a camera or you use your phone and get them to video you interviewing. Okay? Highly embarrassing, but it will give you a sense of um, how you've performed and how you've achieved what you've said. Did you look boring in the interview? Did you come across well? Have you rambled? What are the key things you've said? Because it is hard to remember after the interview what you've been saying, okay? The preparation is key. Not enough people prepare for interviews. Uh, as we were saying is most companies will ask the same question over and over again. So HR departments will ask you to give you a brief run through their CV. We'll talk you through what's my strengths and weaknesses? Awful question, as I've said before, but you need to know it's coming up. Follow up, show determination. It's understanding that most people will not come back to you in the timely fashion that you think uh, would work for you. Most organizations will at least take two weeks, three weeks, even a month to come back. 
improve your skills and your research. What this means is that, again, most people going in for a job only know the two lines of the company's website. They don't know enough of detail about what the company does. Because if they ask you what's happening in the news lately about us and you don't know, it just says, you know what, all the rest is rubbish. You don't care enough to research it on that, okay? This requires substantial amount of work and effort, right? I have often suggested that sometimes a CV can take up to two days to get right, okay? And then you could have four versions of your CV. I suppose the key thing is, why would somebody hire you? If you can answer that question when you're applying for a job, why would you hire yourself for this position? That's the key, and then you've got to articulate that for them.